I did my project over paternalism, dependency and self-actualization, self-determination, and autonomy. Paternalism is where the helper makes decisions for the patient without their consent because they feel like it is in their best interest. There are many arguments for and against paternalism. An argument for paternalism is when it comes to the helper-client relationship, a social worker has knowledge about certain situations and what can be done in those situations to help. It also makes more fit sense for the helper to evaluate the situation and determine what path should be taken because they know the benefits and the risk and what treatment plan or option is best. Also, the client may be suffering from mental illness or in a situation where they're vulnerable, and by saying this, their judgment can be skewed. An argument against paternalism, on the other hand, is that two distinct assumptions can be made. The provider can keep important information from the client and make important decisions for them, and that the helper thinks that they always know what is best for the client. Also, in the past, professionals have been known to abuse their power, share information with others that is supposed to be confidential, and make sexual advances on their client. All these actions are unethical and make people question if paternalism is the right option. Autonomy, on the other hand, is where one has the ability to control their own life instead of it being controlled by others. Some paternalistic practices that can be considered unethical is not informing the client of their true diagnosis, not disclosing with your client all available options and the risk and benefits associated with each one of them, lying or withholding information from your client, making important decisions for the client, and presenting the information in a biased way so the client chooses the option that you want them to. When it comes to the NASW Code of Ethics, it is important to follow and know them. Paternalism can be ethical if core values and ethical principles are followed and kept in mind. When it comes to the value service, it is important for helpers to keep in mind that their primary goal is to help people in need and address their social issues. This is important when it is related to paternalism because if it, the therapist is going to decide without the client's explicit scent, it is important for them to have the client's best interest in mind. Another important value is integrity, and this deals with the helpers being honest and trustworthy. If a client can trust the person that is supposed to be helping them, then they may be okay with the helper making decisions because they know that they'll have their best interest in mind. Lastly, when it comes to competence, it is important for social workers to practice in areas where they're knowledgeable and comfortable. When this relates to paternalism, a client may be okay with you making decisions for them because they know that you are professional and you are more knowledgeable than them. A case involving paternalism is a 19-year-old client with a history of abuse diagnosed with mild depression. The client has gone through many therapists and he did not like their approaches to counseling and he felt like it didn't help him. Currently, the client is back living in the home that he was once abused in and is around his family that does drugs. Past therapists believe this client has a bright future ahead of him because he is a student athlete, he does good in school, and he has a lot of friends. When the client is his, around his family, however, he starts getting more depressed and does not attend school daily. In the fall, he is planning on attending a college for sports, but is drawn between going to a college nearby that is public or going to a college a little bit farther away that is private. The new therapist is drawn between talking to him about the pros and cons of each school and allowing him to make the decisions for himself or giving him a plan to follow according to what she thinks is in the client's best interest. In the past, he has allowed his family to have a say-so in his important decisions 
and the therapist feels that if she allows him to make the decision for himself will actually be what he wants and what's best for him or it be what his family wants and his family thinks that is best. So I did the ethical approach regarding client issue on the model for ethical decision making. The first thing is state the problem. The client is drawn between attending a public college nearby or a private college farther away from his house. The second thing I did was identify the facts, which is in the past the client has been abused by his family, but still allows them to have control and influence of his life and his decisions. When he is around his family, he becomes depressed and he does not act like himself and go about his daily life like he usually does. The third thing I did was consider the ethical principles. The therapist's goal is to help people in need and address social problems. Also, it is important to behave in a trustworthy manner. The fourth thing I did was consider how the problem would look from another perspective. If the client was not in a household where they were abused or were not controlled on a regular, would it still be okay to make the decision and give him a plan to follow? The fifth thing I did was identify ethical conflicts. The therapist's goal is to help the 19-year-old in need of escaping his abusing and controlling family so that he can make a life for himself. However, she is supposed to act in a trustworthy manner so is withholding information about the pros and cons of attending each college unethical or is it considered in his best interest. The next thing I did was consider the law. As a therapist, she is a mandated reporter, and this means that if her client is being abused in any way, she must report it. By saying this, I feel like it is her responsibility to help him get away from a situation where he is likely to be abused and taken advantage of. The next thing I did was I made the ethical decision which I think was the therapist should use a paternalistic approach and give him the plan to follow based on what is in his best interest for his future. The last thing I did was evaluated the situation. If she would have given him the pros and cons of each and allowed him to make this decision for himself, it is likely he would have asked his family, which are also the abusers, for advice. This would have led him to probably being close to home where the cycle of abuse would have continued. The recommendations for human service professionals, I said it is important for human service workers to make sure they maintain an ethical and legally friendly environment. And it is also important for them to take time to understand the NASW Code of Ethics. Also, it is vital for them to know what their purpose is and how to successfully help others. One should become comfortable with their problem-solving skills in order to come up with solutions to help their clients. Lastly, an important thing is to remember is that you're not going to be able to help everyone, but the people you can help, they will thank you in the future.